beautiful. Mmm. Uh, welcome on guys. I'm just out enjoying a bit of sunshine. I've managed to get myself a cheap budget flight out to the Caribbean and I must say I am loving it. It's fantastic to be out of that horrible weather in Blighty away in a bit of sunshine. Mavis, now you've ruined it. So as per usual, there's a lot of fantastic new bikes coming for 2021. There's a lot been announced, so I thought why not do a video looking at all the new bikes I'm really interested in and let's do a little rundown of what's coming, what we can expect and what they're going to be like for 2020. So I've put together a little ensemble of new motorcycles for you to enjoy and we'll run through them, give you some specs previous versions I've ridden I can give you my opinions and basically I let you know what I think these are going to be like so this is going to be my opinion of new bikes coming in 2021 Mavis roll that intro So first of all, we're going to start with a bike I've only ridden a couple of times. Um, well, once really on, on Bruntingthorpe, on, on Bruntingthorpe Proving Ground for a Suzuki Day. And that is, of course, the new Hayabusa, the 1300cc Hayabusa Monster. This bike disappeared last year, or might have been the year before as well, due to Euro 4. Well, it's back again for 2021. And this is a bike which really divides opinion. It's big, it's heavy. It's very fast, but is there a market for it today? Well, I didn't think there was, but after seeing the new images of this bike, I'm actually quite excited about this now. It's £16,000, so I thought it might be more expensive than that. It's an absolute missile. It's a, it's a continent crosser, this bike. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm really rather interested in this. It's 187 horsepower, which is actually slightly down on the old version, but, but never mind that. But it's 150 Newton meters of torque, which is up on the old version. So a bit down on top end, but more grunt, which is really what you're gonna want for a road bike, isn't it, as we've maintained all these years. I fancy taking this on a long overnighter to the south of France or something, just to cover some ridiculous distance on this bike. And that's gonna be my plan for 2021, if we ever come out of lockdown. Take a booster to the south of France and back again with an overnight stop and just see how it covers the mileages. But I'm just wondering, can you put panniers and stuff on the booster? Because the H2SX, of course, has got pannier capabilities. I think for a cross-continent tourer like the booster, surely you're gonna need some sort of luggage facilities. And I've not seen anything about that. But overall, I think it looks great. It's still undeniably a booster, and I'm looking forward to riding one this year. So next up on my list is of course the new Ducati V4 Multistrada. Now again this is a bike I keep thinking getting a bit older I'm 50 this year I keep telling myself have I got room in the garage for a all-in-all -all adventure bike and the GS it's a good bike but it's a little bit dull sorry Bruce but I just want something with a bit more pep. What do Ducati say about it? They say, whichever road you decide to take with your new Multistrada V4, be it the asphalt or the gravel, I don't want the gravel, give me a 17 inch front wheel, but more on that in a minute. Sand or rocks, I don't wanna take it on the blocks, it's a 20 grand bike. You will feel at ease in every moment of your ride that you will experience the pleasure of complete control. Now I like the sound of that, but then they went and put a 19 inch front wheel on it and made it all a bit too adventury. So I'm really looking forward to trying this bike. Some of the reviews I've seen have said the 19 doesn't take too much away from its handling. But what it does mean is you can't put super sticky rubber on it. So whereas before you, it was on a 17 inch wheel, you could put super sticky 17 inch track bike tires on. Now you're limited to more of those adventury type tires, bit less sticky, bit less feel through the front end perhaps. We'll see, we're gonna try one this year. If I was gonna sell my H2, get on something to a bit more comfortable, what we're being 50 this year, yes, I'm not 50 yet. Other slight disadvantage with this new V4 model is fuel consumption. The fuel consumption jumped considerably over the V2 version. So I think it only does about 130, 140 miles from its 20 litre tank or 22 litre tank. Is that enough for that sort of touring machine? We will see, we will test one later this year. 
Next up on the list, what have we got? Why are my eyes so small? Where are my glasses? So next up, we have something I'm really excited about. I love a naked, and this is the new Triumph Speed Triple RS. I've done a little introductory video about this bike, so I won't spend too much time on this one, but it's a model which has to be mentioned for 2021. Massive power increase over the old model. The old model was fantastic, so talky, such a beautifully finished machine but the Triumph have taken the 1200 to the next level. It's a 1260 motor now, as opposed to a 1050. Um, obviously still a, still, a, still a triple, but what they've done is they shed 10 kilos from it. So the power now is 170 horsepower, 177 horsepower, if you're gonna be precise about it. Whereas the old one was 148 horsepower. So massive dollops of power now on top of the old model, and also 10 kilos shed in weight. And I love the new styling. I'm really excited about this. If you want to know more about this one, I'll put a link to my uh, full preview video above. But uh, this is one I can't wait to ride this year. I thought it was going to be end of February. I've heard that's been pushed back till the end of March. They'll be in the dealers. Destination Triumph will get me one as soon as they're in the dealers. Come on, you can do that for me. What is next on the list? What is next on the list of joy? Mavis, what's next? Roll the VT. Next up, we have this little beauty. This is the KTM 790. No, not the 790. This is the new 890. And no, it's not the R version. KTM have upped the capacity of their 790 Duke to bring it in line with the 890 version, but it's not as much power as the 890R. So it's a bit down on power. So the power sits between the old 790 and the 890R. I think it's around about, I can tell you exactly, it's 115 horsepower, whereas the 890R is 121 horsepower. So it's down on the R version. The torque is also down on the R version. We've got 92 newton meters of torque. The R is 99 newton meters of torque. So it's a bit less powerful than the R, but it's more grunty than the 790, of course. I think they've done this really for Euro 5. You know, chuck a bit more capacity at it, make it a bit more powerful. They've also sorted out things like the suspension, the brakes and the tires, which are also not fantastic on the 790. So this 890, I think, could be a very, very good middleweight bike now. Now they've addressed the small little issues with it, the problem is the price has also increased. Not only has the spec and capacity increased, the price has increased as well. It's now 9,649, 96. That's a big increase in price. And also things like the quick shifter, the track mode are now extra where they were included on the 790. So I, you know, they, they, they've obviously tried to close that gap between the, the 890R and the 790 by making this 890, you know, in between the price. The R version is 10,649. So the R version is a thousand pound more, but I'd be almost tempted to just get the R now for another thousand. So it's a tricky one. It's a tricky one. I think it's a really good move going to the 890, but I don't think it's a good move making it 1500 quid more expensive than what the 790 was. But Nevertheless, it's a bike I'm looking forward to riding in 2021. And the R version, for that matter. I haven't ridden the R version yet, so I'll ride, but maybe, comparison video, the 890 Stocker compared to the R. Is it worth an extra thousand pound? That's the video. That's the video, Mavis, right there. Next up, we have this little beauty. Now, this is the KTM Super Adventure S. So there's a new Adventure S from KTM. The old one was great. I've done a review on that. Link at the top there. Really like the old one. A GS Beta, mm, I'm not sure it was. It was definitely more grunty, more powerful than the GS, but maybe not quite as good all rounder. This 2021 version may have addressed its shortcomings because what they've done, they've moved the center of gravity lower. The thing with the GS, with its big boxer engine, the weight is all very low down. So what they've tried to do on the 1290 Adventure now is give it that ball bag fuel tank, like the 890 Adventure. So they've moved the weight of the fuel lower, which is a fantastic way of moving the whole center of gravity lower. So the new 1290S, also, it looks great. It also features this new adaptive cruise control. I'm not sure about this yet. I do, I love cruise control in the car. I absolutely love it. And I love cruise control on sports bikes to get weight off your wrists and stuff. As you know, I'm always banging on about cruise control. But adaptive, I like the idea of it if it works well, but I'm not sure it's worth a 1500 quid 
extra. So uh, I'm sure the press bike I'll borrow will definitely be fitted with the adaptive cruise control. So we'll test it out, we'll see how it works, and I'll let you know if it's something I want to see on motorcycles. It's also on the V4 Multistrada as well. So we'll test out both those systems on both those bikes, and I'll let you know which has the better adaptive cruise control. But 1290 Adventure S with the lower weight, more toys, better styling, it looks like it's an absolute winner. Which is going to be better between that and the new Multistrada V4? Mavis, that's another video idea. Next up, we have something which has been on the cards for quite a long time and really has been a little while coming. And it is, of course, the new Kawasaki ZX-10R. ZX-10R is a phenomenal bike, you know, BSB winner for however many years, eight, nine times in a row. It's a fantastic race bike. It's a great road bike, but I was always a bit disappointed with its torque. You know, it hasn't got much torque. It's overgeared. Never mind the old one. There's a new one now. And the big talking point is that new styled front end, the Darth Vader esque front end, oh, which it now has, which I actually Most don't impressive. mind. It's certainly not pretty, but I'm sure it's very functional with all the downforce. And it looks angry, it looks mean but it is quite different to the old version. And it's got its winglets built into the side of the, of the cowl. It's very clever. Kawasaki and their aerodynamics department are very, very clever. They also do an RR version, this one, which is 25,000 pounds. I think we'll stay with the stocker. The stock version, the, the basic, the single R, is 15,799. So actually, you know, for Lita sports bikes money, that's one of the cheaper ones. That seems relatively good value. They've also addressed one of the things I really didn't like on the old bike, which was the, dis the display. That, that funny, you know, the rev cap, big sort of lights that light up on the rev counter. It's now got a TFT. The Kawasaki TFTs are not the best in the business, in my opinion. They're a little bit overstyled and a bit too gaudy, lots of colors and flashing things. But you know, not as nice as the, the BMWs or the Ducatis, but better than that old display. So now I've got a new TFT, styling update all round, bit more power, a little bit lighter, but not a great deal. It still weighs in at 206 kilos wet. I will be riding this beauty when they arrive at Wheels Motorcycles. I've been told they're running a couple of months behind the UK. You know, in the States, these are already out. In the UK, we're a couple of months behind. So we're not gonna see one in the UK till around May time. So as soon as these are in, I'm sure Wheels Motorcycles will get one down to me and they'll give it a good little spanking and see what she's like. Spank it, chop, spank it. Next up on the list, we have this little beauty. Born in the Ironmongers of Sheffield, the new S1000 single R is again, a long time coming. I think it was uh, 2017 when this was last updated. There's a new version, new styled. Look at it, it's got new LEDs and things and it smokes the tires. Um, yeah, it looks really good. They've again, they followed the same old formula. Shed weight, a bit more power, but a little bit disappointed that it doesn't have the shift cam. It's got the same engine as what really I would imagine is in the uh, the XR, the new XR, because they, they omitted the shift cam from that as well. So it's the same basic chassis, the same basic engine as what is in the S1000 RR, the new one. Same swinging arm. So it's, it's you know, that platform is amazing. So I'm sure this bike is going to be phenomenal. I'm, I'm just hoping it's got enough torque, this motor. I'm just hoping it's exciting enough because my only criticism of the old model, fantastic as it was, but it was a little bit boring, a little bit soulless being a straight four. So I just hope they've managed to give some character to it, some excitement to it. I'm sure it will be, and we'll be riding these as soon as they're available. I'll hopefully BMW Motorrad will sort me out with a demo. What's it gonna cost you? Well, it's gonna cost you what seems like a very reasonable £12,000 starting, £12,000. But of course, BMW do like to charge a little bit extra for the extras. So by the time you spec that up, I suspect you could be approaching the 18, 17, 18,000 mark by the time you look at a fully specced one. But starting at 12 grand, I think that's pretty reasonable. Very interested to try this bike. Hopefully soon we will be riding. Next up, we have a bike which is just amazing, amazing. It's the new s 1000 rr M version. So the M version of the s rr The specs on this thing are just crazy. 212 horsepower, 
which uh, and the standard double lies 207 horsepower so a big increase in power 500 rpms higher revving red lines to 15,000 <laughs> rpm 15,000 rpm that's just phenomenal it's got all the aero it's got carbon fiber wings it's got different brakes you know it's, it's lighter weight white it's 192 kilos wet fully fueled 192 kilos the the m the the, the normal s thousand double r m sport with the carbon wheels is 197 kilos so it's five kilos lighter than the already astoundingly light double r m sport bristling with technology super light super powerful but also super expensive at a bit of an eye-watering 31,000 pounds so basically it's a homologation special so this is you know they brought out the race version of the s1000 a few years ago well, that was a track only bike well this one is more is road going but it's really a homologation special to get them winning more in, uh, in in racing really but 31k on the road the i'm hoping bmw uk have a, a press bike of this i really hope they do looking forward to riding it if they do because uh, it looks rather splendid what we got next what we got next more new bikes what we got next next up we have this little rascal little uh, little cheeky one little cheeky one from yamaha they finally done an update on the mt07 I like the M207. Well, it's, it's a really, really good bike, the M207. There's an introductory first big bike, if you like. It's fantastic, obviously A2 compliant. Well, Yamaha have been away and they've had a bit of a rethink. Obviously, Euro 5 on the horizon, the old engine wouldn't meet Euro 5. So they've done some tweaking. And as well as the tweaking of the engine, they've restyled the bike. Now, this has caused a little bit of controversy on the interwebs with people slamming this a little bit for its styling and uh, it's like a lot of new things when a new bike comes out which is radically different it takes a little while for your brain to adjust and start to appreciate it and actually I'm quite liking now the new lines of the new Yamaha Naked range so uh, yeah the M207 will it be have they done enough to beat the Trident I'm not sure I'm not sure the quality is quite there the suspension and chassis is also unchanged on the M207. That was the weak point of the bike. So it's really a styling exercise. New LCD dash, new motor, but not much change to the motor really, just to get it for Euro 5. So spec wise, you know, not much of an increase in power at all, but uh, still going to be a fantastic bike, I'm sure. And I will really try and ride one of these this year. I struggle to get on Yamahas. Yamaha UK don't talk to us vloggers, so it's hard to ride one. And I haven't really got a very friendly Yamaha dealer. So uh, I may struggle to get on one, but I really want to do a comparison between the M207 and the new Trident. So uh, fingers crossed we can pull that off. Now we are sticking in the Yamaha camp with the new MT-09. Now this is a bit of a different story to the MT-07. Similar looks, again, caused lots of controversy on the interwebs when people saw this. But again, I wasn't keen to start with, but it is now growing on me a little bit. But Yamaha have done more than just a styling exercise with this bike. They've, they've overhauled it. It's now got a new frame. So it's got a Delta Box style frame. So it's 50% more rigid, the frame on, on the M209 now, because it always was a little bit saggy in the frame department. Suspension's also been beefed slightly. Whether they've done enough there, we'll see. The engine has increased in capacity. It's now an 889cc and it was an 847cc. So they've upped the capacity, probably for Euro 5, you know, to still keep similar power, but the power has gone up. She's now 117 horsepower and it was 115 horsepower. So there's a couple of, of your horsepowers extra. How much is all these changes gonna cost you? Well, it's still reasonably priced at 8999. So 9,000 pound list for the new MT-09. So I think a good comparison will be MT-09 versus the new 890 Duke. You know, similar price machines, the MT, MT being slightly cheaper. One day we will ride it, I hope. Next up on the list is a bike which really came out last year, but I haven't ridden it yet. It's, it's, they've only really started, it was very, very late last year. So not many people have ridden this bike. This is of course, this one which is the Aprilia RS660. Now, the reason this is in the list is because there's now the Tuono version which has come out. So we'll talk more about the Tuono version in a minute, but the RS660 is a 659cc parallel twin. Basically, it's half 
of the RSV4 engine. So sounding good so far. I mean, what better way of getting a great engine than to take one of the best engines in existence and, and cut it in half? So they, they're going to have quite a good platform here. It may only be 660cc, but it makes 100 horsepower. And I think 100 horsepower on the road is could almost be the perfect fun figure. The Trident was 80 horsepower. That was a lot of fun, but this has got another 20 horsepower for the same CCs. So I think 100 horsepower on the road, a great fun bike is what that equates to. 67 newton meters of torque, pretty reasonable for the capacity of it. But the good thing is it only weighs 183 kilos, so it's nice and light. So 100 horsepower, 183 kilos wet. That's sounding like a fantastic fun bike for the road. It also comes laden with electronics. It's got an IMU, so it's got all the cornering based, you know, sensitive traction and braking. It comes in at 10,150 pounds, so just over the 10,000 pound mark, but that is cheaper than the 890R. So it'd be interesting to see, the 890R is more powerful, but I think we're gonna have to do a comparison between the 890R and the RSV4. But that, RSV4? But I think that is sounding very, very good, and I will be riding one very, very soon, within a week or so, because wheels motorcycles are dropping me down. The RS660 and the new Tuono 660. So let's move on to that one. The Tuono 660 has only just been announced, so the details are quite scarce about this at the moment, but it's obviously based on the same platform as the RS660, but with higher bars, different styling. But it's gonna be about 500 pound cheaper, but it's gonna the quick shifter and blipper is gonna be an option. It's also not gonna have fully adjustable suspension. Um, so, oh, I don't know, for £500, should you pay an extra £500 and have fully adjustable suspension and a quick shifter? And the RS660 is not a very aggressive riding position, it's sort of in the middle. So, do you need a Toronto version of it? These are the questions, and this is what we're going to be answering very soon, because, as I mentioned, Wheels Motorcycles are dropping me down, an RS660 and a Toronto 660 so we can do some direct comparisons between those two bikes and that's going to be happening in about a week and a half they're going to be here with me next week I won't be able to ride them because I can't ride until the 1st of March because that's what they're, when they're registered and then we're going to be out on them so I'm going to be bringing you some Toronto 660 and some RS 660 reviews very very soon I'm really quite excited massive thanks to Wheels Motorcycles for sorting that for me absolutely brilliant cheers guys and that, ladies and gentlemen, is about it for new bikes for 2021. There are some others, of course, there are some others come in, but I've just really concentrated on the stuff which interests me the most. I'm very selfish like that. <laughs> oh, it's lovely, isn't it? Bit of sunshine. I can't wait for the summer to arrive. Not long now, and we'll be sat in the sunshine. Okay, it may not be quite as picturesque as this in Old Blighty, but uh, we, just to have some sun and just some riding, I can't wait, I'm very excited. And I will be throwing my leg over every single one of those machines this year. I will guarantee it, I'm gonna ride all of them. Despite COVID, I mean, it seems the manufacturers have done a bloody good job of getting these new bikes developed, release and out, you know, so uh, I don't know how they've done it. I don't know how so many new models have been released despite the whole COVID and people working from home. It can't have been easy, so big thumbs up to the manufacturers for trying so hard and bringing us these bikes i can't wait to ride them and hopefully soon take care guys and i'll see you later on cheers this is power level one which is full power <laughs> I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! Listen to me!